Ready to go, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we had a false alarm that Chairman McCall was on his way, so I came back a second time. <laughs> um, but given the uncertainty surrounding uh, the scheduling here, I think I should probably just go ahead, although I would like to uh, say that uh, I would have preferred to have been here with Chairman McCall together, because I think it's important um, that this is both a bicameral and a bipartisan effort in leadership of the CSIS report. I want to say first how much I appreciate Chairman McCall agreeing to participate as co-chairman. Uh, he has significant responsibilities on the House side as chairman of Homeland Security, and he has demonstrated a very strong commitment on cyber issues. Um, I have it on good authority that he is a uh, good man on cyber issues, that good authority being my uh, Democratic Congressman from Rhode Island, Jim Langevin, who knows Chairman McCall well and, and who serves with him both in Congress and on the committee. So uh, I think we're off to a promising start in that sense. Having mentioned Jim Langevin, I also want to mention my appreciation for Congressman Langevin's leadership of this same report eight years ago. Uh, Jim takes an extremely sincere and determined interest in cyber. He is viewed, I think, in many quarters as one of the House's strongest experts on cyber. And he threw himself into this effort uh, with real diligence and created a terrific result. So I want to take some of my time today to commend uh, my fellow Rhode Islander, Congressman Langevin. Uh, the work that he led and that CSIS performed eight years ago, uh, I went back and reread the report once it was clear that I was uh, going to take on the co-chairmanship. And I have to say, after eight years, in an area of uh, expertise where both policy and technology are changing very rapidly, that report still holds up very well and a considerable number of its recommendations were put into action. So that report sets a very high bar for our efforts with this report. And I pledge to uh, Chairman McCall and to Jim and the terrific CSIS staff that my staff and I will work as hard as we can uh, to meet or exceed that standard. Uh, this is a very promising opportunity to bring House and Senate, Republican and Democrat, together on an issue that is vital to our national security, that is vital to our economy, and that has very significant implications for our law enforcement. So uh, we have considerable work to do. This is a beginning and not an end. But I accept the uh, co-chairmanship with gratitude and with a strong sense both of duty and uh, expectation, and uh, I'm glad to take any questions that uh, anybody may have as we uh, await Chairman McCall's arrival, assuming that is to transpire. Yes? Uh, Tom Goodman from Politico for Cyber. Uh, it seems like the cyber legislation through Congress has always been difficult. It may even be getting more difficult. Uh, this year has seen a couple false starts on information sharing in the Senate. It's unclear if it'll actually manage to get over the finish line. Uh, are you guys going to be taking a look at whether the difficulty of passing legislation is an impediment to real progress in this area, if there's anything you can do with your colleagues to spur more substantive change in that regard? With respect to the CSIS report, it is designed as a policy recommendation to the incoming president of the United States. So I expect that it will recommend legislative action for the new president to support, but I expect it will be heavily dedicated to actions that the executive branch can accomplish on its own. With respect to the first part of your question about the difficulties of uh, moving forward with a cyber bill, 
I think actually we have a very good chance of moving forward with the cyber bill right now. We were very close to a comprehensive cyber bill not long ago until the minority leader went to the floor and announced that he was going to attach a repeal Obamacare amendment to any cyber bill that came up. That was in his role as minority leader when he wanted to make sure no legislation passed the Senate. Now as majority leader, there's a very different attitude and we have not uh, responded in kind as a minority um, and we are looking forward to working constructively on a cyber bill. We have a bipartisan vehicle to go forward with on the information sharing legislation that has come out of the Intelligence Committee and been commented on by other committees. We have a significant bipartisan piece of legislation that Senator Graham and I have just held a hearing on in the law enforcement area. We have a significant bipartisan piece of legislation that Senator Blunt did with me in the awareness and notice uh, area of cybersecurity. So I think we have a terrific opportunity in the Senate to get to a, a core bill on the floor and then through the process of amendment add significant thoughtful bipartisan amendments that are truly directed to cybersecurity and uh, get on and off the bill in a time frame that can give the majority leader confidence that he should dedicate the effort. So are you saying you're going to seek to add that draft that you and Senator Graham are working on as an amendment uh, when CISA comes to the floor? Very much, or a version of it. It's a draft right now. We've just had the air and we're looking for input. We're open to uh, helpful suggestions, uh, but we very much hope that a version of that can be made a part of the bill or voted into it on the floor by amendment. And I think the same is true for the Blunt White House legislation. Yes, sir. Senator, we discuss cybersecurity, the 800 plus pound gorilla is the Department of Defense and, and its associated intel agency, the NSA is strictly part of, of defense. Uh, what, how does, you know, A, the legislation look for now, and B, uh, the people looking at this issue for the report, you know, square the circle of making use of all those resources over in DOD without militarizing the problem. Because DOD itself is very ambivalent about this. Yeah, well, um, Barbara Mikulski, who is um, a great leader in this area and takes the issue very seriously, not only as a matter of policy and national security, but also as a matter of constituent service, since NSA is in her state, um, is fond of saying that uh, the National Security Agency is the mothership um, upon which defense and other agencies depend for a lot of the substantive technical work that uh, takes place. Um, in the areas that we are legislating, the question of the militarization of the internet is not really at issue. It is important that the independent service providers and the government be able to exchange threat information and that it be clear where the liability should lie and when that, I think, will be worked out in the uh, bill that should be the core going forward and whatever amendments to it are made. Now, the notice bill is just really a question of making sure that the public is aware of what is happening out there and putting the government agencies on notice that they are obliged to report more to the public on what's happening in cybersecurity. And the uh, law enforcement component addresses primarily the difficulties of dealing with overseas bad actors that law enforcement within the United States faces, but also correcting some penalties and some um, over-prescription of uh, certain conduct. So I don't see any of that as contributing to the militarization of the internet. Yes, sir. So, uh what role are you personally at your office going to have in the, the creation of this, this report, and what are some of the specific things you'd like to see in? Uh, I am told that uh, uh, Chairman McCall's and my role will be to make sure that in the scoping of the questions that are asked, we are satisfied that the important questions that 
we think need to be answered are in fact in there. That um, we're in a position to provide uh, advice as to what some of the answers might be, although we're not in a position to uh, dictate on that. And that where there are policy disagreements or log jams that uh, arise uh, during the staff process that we will use our efforts to try to propose solutions to those log jams so that they can be cleared and we can move on to other issues. Uh, so uh, I think those are important roles. I have some very expert people in my staff who I think can provide very considerable substantive good advice to me and to the process. And I know Chairman McCall has the same. So I hope to be a very uh, helpful and active force in a very robust and useful process. And then what specific policies would you like to see them tackle? There are uh, a number, but um, I think that to the extent that we can find ways to regularize a more secure internet, in areas where the public understands that it needs to be more secure, around our electric grid, around people's financial records, around bank records, things like that. Um, I think making recommendations to regularize the way we reinforce those parts of the internet without having to fight over what websites people want to visit in their free time, or um, how do you leave the Wild West of the internet, the Wild West, while also making um, a Fort Cyber in which critical infrastructure can reside securely, I think is a good general question to ask. I also think that it's a good general question to ask that given the speed of change and given the national security, economic, and law enforcement importance of this issue, are we presently structured right in government to address the cyber threat? And if we are not, what mechanisms need to be put into place to see to it that we turn our headlights on, look to the future, and are ready to uh, deal with this with an administrative structure that is suitable for the tasks that we foresee. So those would be two areas right off the top of my head. Yeah, just a quick follow -up. Are you talking about within government itself or broad? Within government itself. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Sean, this is FCW. Um, to what extent will you, will the task force, um, assess offensive measures or punitive measures for, for cyber intrusions. There's been a lot of talk uh, after the OPM hack about not having enough <coughs> punitive measures in place. Um, will you tackle that issue? I suspect that we will end up looking at it in uh, three ways. First of all, within the Department of Defense, what recommendations we might have to an incoming president on what a offensive capability might look like from a traditional military point of view. Um, the second uh, would be um, what we need to construct internationally by way of a regime of sanctions and agreements and understandings so that it's clear where the lines are and how deterrence can be organized and uh, all of that. And the third is um, addressing the question of private active defense, so-called, and uh, the limits upon a private organization's ability to uh, defend its own networks by putting uh, systems and uh, mechanisms in operation that might affect other users. Hacking back. Hmm? Hacking back. Hacking back would be the, the sort of far extreme um, but between sitting there and doing nothing and complaining about it and actually hacking back and counterattacking who you think is at the source, there's a wide array of activities that could take place. And at the moment, that's one big, rather sloppy gray area. And uh, I think we could productively provide some analysis and support for ways to begin to chop up that space into different analytic quadrants. I just said analytic quadrants. <laughs> Clearly, we're at a wildly technical and uh, somewhat tedious <laughs> topic. 
<laughs> but nevertheless, very important, and I'm happy to do the work. So thank you all for coming, and uh, I expect Chairman McCall will be along shortly, and I hope he will be worth your wait. I'm sure he will. I very much look forward to working with him. I appreciate uh, Jim and uh, Karen and Denise and the whole uh, team. We really do look forward to working with you. They've pulled together a terrific array of private sector and other advisors to help uh, do this work. I'm really optimistic about this process. I think it's one of the best policy development processes that I've seen in uh, Washington, and it's, I think, done from a very you know, good-hearted, nonpartisan, let's get this right point of view. So very pleased to be a part of it. Look forward to doing a lot of work on it, and hope we can match the uh, Langevin report for uh, merit and lasting value. Thanks very much. Thank you. I saw you. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for doing this. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the open market, and so I've got a I'm chair in it, so obviously. Oh, you're going to be there? <coughs> yeah, I want to make sure I'm back. So yeah, I'm going to keep you Don't. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And we appreciate you taking yeah, the time. Thank you. It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll yeah. be great. And they're all looking forward to your remarks. They're stuck around for you. Wow. Stuck around for you. That's awesome. <clears throat> I'd like to be reading this. <laughs> Just make a whole lot of news really quickly, and then yeah. There yeah. You go. Or what do you want me? What's the format? Stand up. It's a way to shake it. You don't want your remarks. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me just thank uh, Jim, Lewis, and uh, CSIS and Senator Whitehouse for uh, reconvening what I think was perhaps one of the most downloaded reports uh, that ever came out on, on cybersecurity uh, that we produced last. Uh, Go around and <clears throat> want to thank you for your uh, leadership on this, on this issue. Um, I think 10 years ago, and I remember talking to Jim before some campaigns or something, people didn't know what cyber was, and members of Congress certainly didn't know what cybersecurity was. And I think we've come a long ways uh, in terms of education uh, on the issue, which is so important. Uh, but unfortunately, I think the events have produced uh, interest. And I think uh, the, the vulnerabilities um, and uh, the attacks have never been greater than they are today. Uh, all you have to do is look at the breach um, on uh, OPM from what I believe is the Chinese, uh, Anthem, Blue Cross, and it takes uh, all different forms, whether it's Target Home Depot, which was more credit card theft, criminal uh, enterprise, to uh, what happened at OPM, Anthem, and Blue Cross, which looks like more big data theft done for espionage purposes. So our federal government's under attack on a daily basis on a lot of levels, yeah. but also our private citizens are under attack uh, with their uh, personal private information uh, and, and their uh, credit card information. So it's a theft, espionage, and then and Jim and I talk a, a great deal about an event that we would never want to see happen, and that's a uh, an event to bring things down, which would be a cyber warfare. Uh, we know the capabilities there. Uh, we certainly have it. Other countries have it. Uh, they've chosen not to exercise it. Uh, well, I shouldn't say completely. Uh, in some instances, it has been. Um, Estonia's a good example. Of course, we saw that it stuck so that I can't get into the detail. Uh, but we don't want to see that kind of uh, attack in the United States. Um, on any critical infrastructure, whether it be our power grids, um, water systems, uh, transportation, and everything connected to the internet's vulnerable to that kind of attack. Um, and so the key, I think uh, there are several issues I think that we'll be looking at. Uh, it would be great if the Senate would pass my cybersecurity bill. You can write that down. <laughs> because I think that bill goes a long ways um, with the Department of Homeland Security sharing threat information with the private sector, private sharing with the federal government, which could have helped prevent the breach on OPM, uh, but also private to private where it's not taking place right now. We're not sharing the malicious codes as much as we should to protect our infrastructure. Uh, and a lot of it's because of liability protection reasons. And the bill provides that liability protection. It provides a, a civilian interface it's not uh, a spy agency or a prosecuting agency. It's a civilian agency that we believe is designed solely for cybersecurity purposes, and that is the sharing of the threat information. So we, 
I do know the Senate is going to start taking up cyber in the next month. And uh, I think we'll have some work to do, both House and Senate. And of course, I'll allow your good judgment and advice as I proceed on that as well. But just let me conclude, because I do have to return, unfortunately, that uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I think the last time we did this,